Hello and welcome to News Now on TV 360. I am Thelma Okoro. The United Nations says it will relocate its humanitarian coordination center to Maidugri de Bono state capital in order to reach out to those mostly affected by the Boko Haram insurgency. UN resident and humanitarian coordinator in Nigeria, Fatma Samura, disclosed this at the end of her humanitarian situation assessment visit to Bono state. She said relocating the coordination center from Abuja to my degree had become necessary due to the condition at the internally displaced persons camps and communities hosting them. Troops of the Nigerian army have arrested six Boko Haram terrorists and recovered improvised explosive dev making devices while raiding Boko Haram hideouts. A statement issued by the Nigerian army said the operation was carried out by troops of 22 Brigade Garrison accompanied by some civilian joint tax force in Baboshi, Garna, Kaeri, Kadaru, Gineba and Ajiri regions, northeast Nigeria. The Boko Haram insurgency has reached on in Nigeria's northeast for about seven years now, killing over 10,000 people. However, in the past few months, the Nigerian military has succeeded in beating back the Islamist sect, significantly reducing the amount of suicide attacks on civilians in the northeast. Nigeria's army has arrested the leader of Islamist militants group Ansaro, a splinter faction of Boko Haram. The Ansaro group has been accused of kidnapping and killing Westerners. Defense spokesman Brigadier General Rabi Abubakar said Ansaro leader Khalid al banawi was arrested in Lokoja, the capital of the central state of Kogi, on Saturday. The intense fuel scarcity currently being experienced in Nigeria has entered another week. For more than a month now, Nigerians have been queuing for several hours at fuel service stations all over the country to get petrol. In Lagos and Ogun State in the southwest region, Delta and River State in the south-south region, Kaduna, Nasarawa and Plato in northern Nigeria, the situation appears unbearable. Some fuel stations have more than tripled the price of fuel, which is selling for as high as 300 naira per litre. The Minister of State for Petroleum, Ibe Kachuka, has given assurances that he's trying his best to ensure the queues reduced between the first and second week of April. The Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, Serap, says the protracted scarcity of fuel in Nigeria amounts to a violation of the United Nations International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights by the Nigerian government. The group in a statement on Monday by its executive director, Adeto Kumbo Momoni, noted that the protracted fuel scarcity had not only deprived Nigerians of unquantifiable economic opportunities, but it had also subjected them to unwarranted torture, cruel and degrading experiences. Seraf said it was time President Muhammad Buhari, who doubles as the Minister of Petroleum Resources, rose up to the occasion to find a permanent solution to the fuel scarcity crisis in the country. The Petroleum Products Pricing Regulatory Agency, PPPRA, has said there is no plan to increase the official price of petrol in the country. The agency also said the state oil firm, NMPC, would have 41.73% allocation for supply of petrol in the second quarter of the year. This is contained in a statement signed by Lanry Oladele, Head Corporate Services, on Sunday in Abuja. According to the statement, the agency says it will retain the retail prices of 86 naira for the NMPC and 86.50 naira for other marketing companies. It added that the pump price of household kerosene would also remain unchanged. It urged motorists to desist from panic buying as it worked harder to end the fuel crisis. Head of the upstream division at NMPC, Belo Rabiu, says Nigeria's refinery in the northern city of Kaduna is expected to restart by mid-April. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NMPC, halted crude flows to its refineries around mid-January after the key pipelines feeding the plants were attacked. The refineries in Kaduna, Port Harcourt and Wari were then shut down a few days later. The Kaduna refinery produces over 100,000 barrels per day. Despite being Africa's largest crude oil exporter, Nigeria imports almost all of its gasoline. Minister of State for Petroleum Ibe Kachiko had last week confirmed that Nigeria was in talks with oil majors such as Chevron, France's Total, and at least ENI to get help revamping the alien refineries. President Muhammad Buhari has arrived in Nigeria after participating in the Nuclear and Security Summit in Washington, D.C. last week. During his trip, President Buhari asked the United States for help in returning stolen Nigerian assets stashed in U.S. banks. 
Buhari made a request during a meeting with U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry on the sidelines of the Nuclear Security Summit. The United States and Niger also agreed to establish working groups focused on strengthening security cooperation, the economy and tackling corruption. He also met with Nigerians in the diaspora, assuring them of his administration's will to move the country forward as rapidly as possible. The Nigerian army has sacked Ali Umomo, a brigadier general who allegedly supervised the rigging of the 2014 governorship election in Ekiti State. Minister of Defense Mansu Danali told newsmen Momo's career in the military had been terminated after the report of a military panel investigating unprofessional conduct of officers and soldiers during the elections in Nikiti and Oshun State indicted him alongside other soldiers. The Board of Inquiry chaired by Adeni Oyebade, a major general, made far-reaching recommendations meant to assist the army in future involvement in civil elections. The Nigerian Navy says it has impounded two boats carrying about 100,000 liters of illegal diesel in Akukuto local government area of River State. The illegal diesel is worth about 20.4 million naira, according to the Nigerian Navy. Commander Ugochuku Ajulu, who is in charge of the Nigerian Navy ship NNS Pathfinder, confirmed this to newsmen. The Nigerian Navy conducts patrols to fight vandalism and oil theft in that region. Former governor of Ogun State, Olushego Oshoba, has returned to his former political fold where he left years ago from the defunct Action Congress of Nigeria, ACN. Top leaders of the All Progressives Congress on Sunday met to receive Oshoba back into their fold at his residence in Lagos State, Southwest Nigeria. The party leaders present were former governor of Lagos State, Bolatinubu, the former governor of Ogun State, Bisia Konde, deputy governor of Lagos State, Oluronti Adebule, who represented the governor of Lagos State, Akiomi Ambode. Oshoba led the defunct ACN after a, part in party, after a party in fighting, which took him and his supporters to the Social De Democratic Party, SDP, in the 2015 general elections. He is seen as one of the SDP founders. Governor Simon Lalong of Plato says President Muhammad Buhari and the state governors have agreed that ranches should be established to address incessant farmers and herdsmen clashes. The ranches will replace a former plan to establish grazing reserves. Governor Lalong said that grazing reserves would not address the clashes and the killings in that region. About 200 people were killed in one of the recent clashes between herdsmen and their host communities in Agatu Benue State. Time for a short break, and we will come by and we'll look at business and international stories. Stay tuned. Hello, you're welcome. You're watching the Funny White Man Show, which is the biggest, the brightest, and the most entertaining show in Africa. Funny you White Man, Funny White Man, Funny White Man, but this way you talk, you're yeah. too much. Yeah. Give me 5,000 man, that's you. You're <laughs> <laughs> too much. So you get to like, when she move along the street, ah, yeah, me should like, yeah, I'm going girl. You know, my own people, ah, yeah. Twali. Yeah. yeah, fine, it's fun. I enjoy it. And I'm one of those very few. I'm, I'm forever too. sticking it personal. I will listen say 160 million Nigerians are corrupt. How? I thought I'm looking for you. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's a growth and this is the time to build business and know the pitfalls and know what to do and what not to do. But there are months where you get business and months... You know how we do, how we do it. We do the way you do Hello, you're welcome. You're watching Trending Matters on the Funny White Man Show. Of course, we will bring you trending issues just to entertain and tickle your fancy. Welcome back. You're watching TV 360 News now. Oil prices fell on Monday as investors did some of their bullish bets on another price rise. It came as chances that top exporters will agree to rain in overproduction appeared to fade. Brent crude was down 28 cents at $38.39 a barrel, while U.S. crude was down 38 cents at $36.41 a barrel. Oil prices have fallen more than 65% since mid-2014, 
when booming U.S. shale oil output and supply from within and outside OPEC created one of the largest global surpluses of crude oil. A huge leak of confidential documents has revealed how the rich and powerful use tax havens to hide their wealth. 11 million documents were leaked from one of the world's most secretive companies, Panamanian law firm Mossack Fonseca. Elected leaders and top officials from around the world have responded to the leak by denying involvement. Some of those involved are associates of Russian President Vladimir Putin, a member of FIFA's ethics committee, and top sports stars, among others. The first boat carrying migrants being deported from Greece has arrived in Turkey. This is part of an EU plan aimed at easing mass migration to Europe. Most of the 136 people who left Lesbo and arrived in Dikili, Western Turkey, on Monday were Pakistanis. Under the deal for each Syrian migrant returned to Turkey, the, U the EU is due to take in another Syrian who has made a legitimate request. Sixteen Syrian migrants were the first to arrive in Germany from Turkey. However, Syrians were not among the first group of deportees, Greek authorities said, adding that they included citizens from Bangladesh, Sri Lanka and Morocco who had not applied for asylum. NFF former Super Eagles captain Juan Kwokano has slammed the Nigerian Football Federation for its poor management of the country's senior football team, the Super Eagles. Kano, who amassed a total of 87 caps for the senior team, blamed poor management by the NFF as a key reason for the Eagles' failure. The Eagles will miss the 2017 AFCON for the second successive time after failing to defeat the Pharaohs of Egypt in the two matches played in March. Premier League defending champions Chelsea have confirmed former Juventus coach Antonio Conte as its new manager. The Italian who would leave his job as coach of his country's national team has agreed a three-year deal with the Blues. He will be the fifth Italian to manage Chelsea. Five-time World Footballer of the Year Lionel Messi says he will sue Spanish newspaper El Confidencial following allegations that he set up a tax fraud network. The Barcelona legend was one of the high-profile names revealed in a leaked document by Panama Papers. The leaked document accused Messi and his father of acquiring a dormant megastar enterprises through a Uruguayan buffer company. The company has now confirmed that Lionel and Jorge Messi will be, take, will be taking legal action against them while an announcement is expected from the family very soon. That's all we have on news now. We thank you very much for watching. I am Thelma Okoro.